Well, hello there. It's Rooney. And for today's video, I'll be talking about the engineering internship, from how you get one, from how one works, to how much you get paid. So let's just get this video started. So when it comes to a engineering internship, always start early when looking for one. So go to every career fair, say yes to every interview because you never know what opportunity lies and also you have a better chance of finding a internship later on. So now I'm gonna share some personal experience of how I got my internships. So my first internship, I got the summer between freshman and sophomore year and most of the time companies usually don't hire freshmen going into their sophomore year because that's just the time where like people are changing their majors maybe they realize they don't want to do engineering so most of the time companies and firms usually don't look at freshmen to hire but not all companies there are some companies but i actually got this internship from a family connection i got this internship at this geotech consulting firm and that was an experience because I made so many mistakes from not asking enough questions because I didn't, I really didn't know what geotech consulting was. I knew that geotech worked with soil and that was it of my knowledge. And I was just very quiet at the time. Um, I just wanted to do my work and be seen as doing a good job, but I should have been asking questions to see if that I was interested. I was very interested. I had questions all the time, but I just utilized Google and sometimes Google didn't really answer my questions. And then I also made the mistake of driving a truck into some wet clay and got it stuck. It was a very embarrassing moment of my life and I would not like to experience it. But also that was the summer where I actually drove a truck for the first time. So I did experience that. And that experience was a resume booster for sure. It gave points to talk about. Um, it actually allowed me to get more interviews. It was just a really good experience. And thanks, thanks for that family connection, you know, use them. And if you don't have them, LinkedIn is your second best choice. Okay, so my second internship was during the summer of the quarantine, during COVID and how like a lot of things were getting canceled, specifically internships. And so at that time I was interviewing for this company that I found at the career fair and they ended up liking me and they wanted to hire me, but they ended up not hiring me because of COVID. And so May school ended, I went back home thinking that I wasn't going to have an internship. Well, this cup, well, it's not a company, the state actually, the state of Louisiana called me up and was like, are you interested in a internship? And I was like, yes, cause I wasn't doing anything else. And so I didn't have an interview. I got hired based on my resume. And I really think I got that job because I had put down that I worked at a geotech consulting firm and I did this and that. And honestly, that was probably the reason why I got hired. But at that internship, it was very low key. Work was slowed down because of COVID, but I did get some on-field experience and another thing to add on my resume. <laughs> and now my third internship where I'm currently at at the moment. They don't know that I'm filming this and hopefully I don't get in trouble, but I doubt they'll find it. But anyway, I currently work at a design firm where they design power lines. I work at their transmission group. So I'm working with a CAD program specifically called PLS CAD. I'm learning a lot. It's more of a indoor scene because it's more of the designing side and not the more of the project management side, which is like being on field and making sure that all the projects work out and that they are built to the best of their ability. But I'm here, I've been working here for about two months, going on to three. I have three more weeks here and I've been enjoying it. The company is pretty nice. So yeah, learning a lot here. And I like how I'm getting the design perspective. 
Also, I just want to add this in here and just talk about it a little bit, but I want to talk about the difference between going into design or project management. So when it comes to design, you're basically designing through special programs like CAD, MicroStation, uh, what else is there? There's EPA Net. There's, there's so many programs to use to build roads and bridges and power lines well actually there's only pls cad to build power lines but you get you get the idea so you're modeling through computed aided programs to you know create things for the public because every single day i promise you you probably use a road or you use a toilet or you need electricity to charge your phone and watch tv you don't realize it but there's a lot of things that go behind the scenes and so designers, they usually are the ones who create the book uh, specifications and designs to follow and how wide the road should be built and what grade it should slope down from, all the specifics, you know? And then the project managers get the book from the designers. Well, there's also more stuff that goes into it, but the project managers get the designs and they have to go build it with the contractors and you know actually build it up make sure that it matches up the designs and if something in the designs don't work out in the field then you have to do some change orders and this and that and xyz to make sure that this road or this power line works and so when it comes to design work you're mostly going to be in a office environment you know in the ac uh, you might have a field visit here or there to actually see the field because sometimes google earth has taken pictures back in like 2015 so you have to see how the field is now in 2020 well it's not in 2020 2021 that's usually the environment of design work but project management you're going to be out in the field out in the maybe 105 degree weather if you're up north like in the snow not well not in the snow but like cold weather you know what i mean yeah i've experienced both and i don't know i don't know which one i like better i like wish i could have half and half for sure because like some days like staying inside working on a computer can be kind of stagnant you know so you might be wondering how do engineering internships work Basically, it depends on the company. More well-established companies like Shell, Chevron, um, maybe PNG, they have specific programs where they're gonna match you up with a mentor and you're gonna be doing this and that and there's some things you have to accomplish and you might have to end your internship with the presentation. The company that I'm working at right now, it's more of a smaller company, so they don't really have their internship program really established. So I'm just like basically helping engineers with work. I've, I've started my own projects, but of course with close guidance and I had a lot of questions because guess what? I did not know what I was doing. So it all depends on the company and usually they'll let you know. I I was given a booklet here of things to accomplish, but it wasn't very, you have to do this. You know, it's more like, here's something of a guidance and you can follow it, but you don't really have to. And as I said, you might be given a project to create and design, but of course you're gonna have all the help that you need because you're a novice and you have no experience in this field of work so ask questions of course and also as a engineering intern you are most definitely going to be working on an excel sheet all my internships i have worked with excel so yeah there's that which is it's not bad i've kind of already mentioned these things already but if you're wondering what i'm doing at my internship currently i'm working with this program called pls cad i'm in an office setting i really don't get a lot of the hard stuff because one i don't have my engineering degree and two i don't know what i'm doing so most of the time i'm giving work with excel sheets i'm checking documents, making sure that X matches with Y, those things. I have done some mini projects for bidding, but they are literally like two structures, don't require much, but I have 
conversations with actual professionals and have worked with others to complete a project. So yes, I have an idea of what they do on a regular basis, but I'm not given as much of a workload because then again, I'm an intern. And also with COVID going on, not a lot of people in the office. So there's probably me and thank goodness there's another girl on my team because she's been very helpful and I don't think I would have been more conversational without her. Now let's talk about the money and how much I get paid as an intern. So at my first company that I worked for, the geotech consulting firm, I was actually getting paid $12 an hour. And at that time I was actually working in Maryland and the minimum wage there is like $12 because it is a more expensive area compared to like Louisiana or like Louisiana minimum wage is like seven or $8 or so. So at that time I was like, shoot, I'm getting paid $12 an hour when I was actually getting paid minimum wage. So there's that. And then at my second internship, I was working for a state entity and usually the state pays less compared to a private company, but then the state gives more benefits. But of course, since I was an intern and I was temp temporary, I didn't get any benefits, but I got paid $16 an hour. And now working for a private company, I get paid $20 an hour. But if you get a internship with the big dogs like Chevron, Shell, Entergy, P&G, just like the companies you've heard of and everyone knows of, you're probably going to get paid around like $25 to $30. And I know because I have friends who work for these said companies. So yeah, but I would say their internships are more competitive for sure. So at every internship that you get, you should have some goals that you want to accomplish while you're there for a summer or for a co-op that's like maybe six months. So the things that I try to accomplish is one, leave with a contact to use for future recommendation letters and for scholarships. This becomes so crucial because it makes it so much easier when you're trying to find a professional to write you a letter or recommend you for another job. Also, when it comes to like people you work with, connect with them via LinkedIn because in the future you can contact them, see if the company that they're working for is hiring. It's just a good base to have because you're building connections for the rest of your life. The second thing I try to accomplish at a internship is to leave the company wanting to hire me in the future. So I have security when finding a job or use it as a way to wage other companies when it comes to salaries or benefits. And then three is to learn what I dislike about a company or certain aspects of the job. For instance, I'm currently commuting an hour here, an hour back, and I really don't like driving. Like I should be the last person to be on the roads. But yeah, that's, that's some perspective. Also, I'm driving longest bridge in the Americas and like the number one longest connecting bridge in the world, but we're not like, we don't have the title of having the longest bridge. Um, if you're wondering what it is, you should look it up. You should look it up. But also I was, I was actually looking this up. Louisiana has like the top four longest bridges in like the United States, which is, which I did not realize, but don't worry. We're also last place in a lot of other things, exactly. So with that, that concludes the end of this video. It is currently 5.40, almost six, and I have to drive an hour home. So that that's going to be fun. But that is the end of this video. And I hope that I gave you insight about the engineering internship. And hopefully you find one if you're an engineer. So I believe in you. I want to wish you the best of luck and I will catch y'all later. Okay. Bye.